what's up? So mean old Mr. YouTube took down the outdoor kitchen video because he didn't like the music I used. So we're gonna put this back up as a more informal explanation on exactly how we built it. You wanna sit here? <laughs> you, you want me to sit over there? Okay. So we enjoy being outdoors and we knew we wanted an outdoor living space and why not make it an outdoor kitchen? Because at about nine o'clock when the sun came over those trees, it would beat down on this back porch until about two in the afternoon. It felt like a brick oven. So the decision was made, let's make an outdoor kitchen. So I broke out the drone. Henry wasn't used to it yet. He was a much younger man back then. But I wanted to get some aerial images of the backyard to see what the best footprint for the outdoor kitchen would be. We drew some lines in the yard and then decided on a general shape. We took that to the drawing board to see exactly how we wanted the layout. We spent a lot of time on the internet looking at other outdoor kitchens to get an idea of what we liked and what we didn't like, and I highly recommend that. And then that final drawing turned into this. The formal plan gave us what we were looking for, a great layout, and most importantly, the shade we needed for the back porch. Wait, hold on, that's crooked. Perfect. So I invited over my good friend, the Dandy. He built our house, and we got him over and talked about what we could do. It was right about here that he realized he was on camera. But we came up with a plan, and they began construction. They dug up all the flagstone, and Henry fell in love with that digger. Where's the digger? Right there. It's, it's over there? It's so far away. <laughs> Where? There. What is that? So I took Henry on a little ride on the digging machine while the guys came out, poured, and finished the concrete. We let that cure for a couple days while Henry ran around. Wait, hold on, Henry wants to tell you something. I learned how to ride my tricycle right here. It's true, he did. He figured out how to ride around backwards first. Eventually, he got the hang of it. So they made the header and put it up on the saw horses. They also pulled the edge of the roof off so that we could tie into the roof system. I had him pull off the ceiling of the porch so that it would eventually match with the new outdoor kitchen ceiling. So then they raised the giant header temporarily with some 2x4s and started laying in the beams. You could really start to see things come together. You could also start to see the yard coming apart. I didn't let it bother me though, you know, it just no big deal. For the ceiling we went with some thick tongue and groove pine that we had gray washed. And when they started to put that up, began to feel what it was like to have a little bit of shade in the backyard. And they put the same tongue and groove pine under the porch ceiling. You can see here on one of the beams where they dug out a trench to run all the gas, electric, and water out to the island. And then back here, we're now tied into the roof structure of the house. And there's all the wood and tarp laid out in the yard, depriving the grass of its necessary sunlight and moisture. But again, it, it didn't bother me. So the pitch of the roof was too flat for shingles, so we went with a painted metal, which was much less expensive than copper. So then we took a little trip over the house to look at the rest of the roof and get a look at the backyard, you know. Maybe it's not as bad as I thought. Never mind. So we wanted the outdoor kitchen to look like it had always been there. So we chose to build the island out of the same brick that the house is made from. Unfortunately, it wasn't available anymore, but thank... Oh, hey, what's up? But thankfully, the original owners had left a pile of the bricks in the back corner of the property. So it wasn't quite enough to build the whole island, but it was enough to use as the primary brick that you can see. And as a secondary brick, we used something of a similar color. And there's Henry and Tiff doing the happy pizza dance. You can see the difference between the two bricks here. So they finished building out the island. We wanted the new columns to match the old columns of the house. And to do that, we needed the original brick but it also meant that we had to track down the stone that was used for the face of the house as well as the side of the house. Eventually we tracked that down to a quarry in Oklahoma somewhere. We ordered it and about a month later it finally showed up. We laid it out in the yard and sorted it right next to the tractor which was now being parked right on top of the grass. It was fine. And then the guys started to dry stack the stone. They used a little bit of mortar to hold things in place, but it was really a work of art watching all that happen. I thought they did a great job, and we took a little flyover, which brought us to the balcony. Upstairs in the game room, overlooking the backyard is a balcony that had some old travertine tile and the grout had washed out and some of the tiles were chipped up. So me and Henry decided to pull all that up, and throw it out in the yard with the tractor. 
We hired some professional guys to lay down some ceramic tile that looked like wood. So it went from this to this. We wanted to use granite for the countertops, but the regular thickness granite just didn't look right around all that heavy, thick stone and brick that we've been using. So I got the idea from our kitchen table that had a stacked, chiseled edge, and I asked the granite installer if he'd be able to pull that off in the outdoor kitchen. And he assured me that was absolutely no problem. So the guys came out and started installing it. It was kind of funny because one of the guys said, man, this really looks great. We've never done it like that before. For the backsplash, we ended up using some travertine tile that I found in the attic. I've always loved making big bonfires, so I knew that I wanted an oversized fire pit in this outdoor kitchen. And you can see where I laid out some stone as a plan for what I was looking for. So the guys came out and took what was left of the grass, and they dug a footing for the fire pit and the benches. And I had them finish out the retaining wall here to help define this space. So then I took the drone on a little run. I was kind of proud of this shot, flying through the outdoor kitchen, threading the needle. But of course that was before drones could fly themselves while making you a ham sandwich. They ended up using the very last of the stone and brick on the fire pit and benches. For the floors, we went with stained concrete. It was fairly simple, inexpensive. The guys came out and did their two day process of acid etching, spraying things, rubbing things making things nice and shiny. So for the appliances, we knew we wanted a low set power burner so we could boil crawfish or cook a big gumbo and not have to lift those heavy pots all the way to countertop level. We wanted a double side burner to saute food while we're grilling. For the grill, we went with the Fire Magic 660. It's a very sturdy unit. It's got little blue LED lights on the dials. I mean, because why not? And then the outdoor kitchen was done. Over the past couple years, we've really enjoyed the space. It's a great place to entertain family and friends. It's beautiful at night, and I love making the fires. Hold on, Tiff wants to say something. So that's our outdoor kitchen. I hope it gave you some ideas for when you build yours. Just like a professional. And no, that's not a camera trick. I actually drug the whole family up to the roof for this shot. Except for the dogs, they stayed on the porch. So if you've enjoyed some of the videos we've made over the past few years, and you want to be part of it and help support the channel, we'll be selling these t-shirts soon. Oh, and we got a TV show too now. But more about that next time. Thanks for watching.